Alright, so let's look at another example where we use the definition of a limit to prove that a certain limit equals some value. Right, so in this example, what we're going to do is so we're going to prove that the limit as x goes to 0 of 3x cos of x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Right. So let's just again see. Alright, so this is our A. That's our L. And of course, this is our f of x, right? 3x cos x squared plus 1. And what do we want to prove? Well, we want to prove the following, right? Just from the definition of the limit. It's for any positive number epsilon, there exists some positive number delta bigger than 0, so that if the distance between x and a in this case, a is 0, it's less than delta, then the distance between f of x and l, in this case l is also 0, is less than epsilon. Okay. And again, we do that by first trying to find some estimate for f of x minus l, in this case l being 0, as well to prove that this is less than or equal to some expression involving the distance between x and 0. Right. So let's see how we'll do that for this particular function. Right. So let's see. Now f of x is 3x cos of x squared minus 1 and minus 0. Right. So this is of course equal to 3 times absolute value x, absolute value cos x squared plus 1. Right. So this is actually the kind of term we want. Right. This is absolute value x minus 0. Right. And the one we don't want is this one, involving cos. <coughs> right. Now remember, what do we know about this cosine function? Right, so no matter what argument you plug in, right, cos of that argument will always be between minus 1 and 1. So the absolute value of cos is less than 1. So what we have here is that this is less than or equal 3 times the absolute value x, well, x minus 0. And again, we have to give a reason, right, and that is because absolute value of cos alpha is less than or equal to 1. Right, so alpha being any any argument. Right. So let's call this inequality A. Right. So this inequality now tells us how to pick delta. Right. So if we want this to be less than epsilon over less than epsilon, right, the whole thing must be less than epsilon, then this bit must certainly be less than epsilon over 3. Right. So now for the next part of the proof. Right, now we replicate this definition for this particular function. Right, so we take some epsilon bigger than zero. Right, it can be any number epsilon, doesn't matter. Some arbitrary epsilon. Right, and now we let delta v epsilon over three. Right. So, for any epsilon, right, x epsilon, there exists a delta, right, which we can read as, we can find a delta, right, so we say we'll take delta as epsilon over 3, right, and now we have to prove that if 0 less than x minus 0 less than delta, with an absolute value, then absolute value f of x minus 0 is less than epsilon, right, so, if, absolute value of x minus 0 is between 0 and delta, then, well, absolute value of f of x minus 0 right, is less than or equal to 3 absolute value x minus 0. And our reason, well, that's by equation A, which we derived earlier. And this, the 
it's not less than 3 times delta, right? And delta is epsilon over 3. So, absolute value of f of x minus 0 is less than epsilon if absolute value of x minus 0 is between 0 and delta, with delta being epsilon over 3. Right. So, this is true. all epsilon bigger than zero. So by the definition of a limit, we've shown that the limit is x goes to zero, f of x is zero. Right. Now, every one of the problems of this type will proceed in the same way. Right? First we get the estimate for f of x minus l in terms of x minus a, right? and that tells us how to pick our delta. And then here, we just replicate the logical structure of the definition. Right. The only place where things can get tricky is here, in deriving this estimate. Right. Note also that this is technically not part of our proof. This is what we want to prove. Right. So this is required to prove. Okay. RTP required to prove. Right, so we'll look at some more examples in other videos.